Hello guys, uh, good morning. This is Dilip Degam, CEO of Simply Excel Training International and Certified John Maxwell Co. And as you would be aware, you know, I have been profiling success icons from around the world in my feature called Simply Excel Success Story. And today I have the honor and privilege of having with me uh, celebrity chef, Mr. Vikram Pitch. You would have definitely heard about him, you know, and just to introduce him a little bit, uh, Vikram was born in India, you know, in, in, uh, and then studied hotel management in Austria. And from there, he moved on to Canada to start working at the Banff Springs Hotel. And that was way back. And then he started his 14 seat first widget restaurant in 1994. He has appeared on many TV programs. He has written three cookbooks. And definitely in every single manner, he has been on the global platforms and a very, very accomplished person and a professional in his field. So he lives in Vancouver, Canada, and I have the honor and privilege of having him with me today for my feature, Simply Access Success Story. And absolutely, I treat it as a privilege and honor to have. Him. So thank you very much, Mr. Witch. You know, I appreciate you taking out time for me and to be on my feature to open up a path of success and indicate a path of success to people, how people can accomplish success through their stages of journey. So welcome aboard, uh, Mr. Vich. Uh, thank you for being with me again. And uh, coming to my interview part of it. So let me start. I have gone through the entire book of yours, Vijay, and that was such an interesting read. Absolutely interesting read. How you have moved at the age of 19 to Austria to study hotel management and what kind of challenges you came through and look at the journey where you are today. A globally renowned celebrity chef. Wow, what an accomplishment. And I really salute you for that. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Namaste. Aap sabko ek bhook wala pyaar or Namaste. You know, hum jis desh se aaye hain, the country that we came from, it was an extremely important thing for me to bring awareness to the cuisine uh, of the country that I had left behind. You know, for 19 years, I lived in a beautiful country. And I drank the water of that country. I, you know, took the soil of that country. And so those roots are very, very Indian. And I never wanted anybody to say that my cuisine was any less complex than anybody else's cuisine out there. And so that, with that focus, with that drishti, with that desire to do something different is uh, why Vijis was given birth to, to create something new from a beautiful country called India and the beautiful people. Ek mother ki haath ki baat, like a simple chai made with love and passion is far more important than the best coffee you might ever have somewhere because that is very, very important. And that was the essence of it. Challenges, of course, you're 19. I didn't speak a word of German, so I had to learn German very quickly. B, I was a brown boy in predominantly a European chef school. So you have to understand, I was given the jobs of dishwashing, back of the house kitchen, you know, always spoken down to as if. And even though I had come from a pretty wealthy family in, in India, so my father was not poor. We didn't poverty. You know, everything was So how... Now, at the age of 19, I realized how a servant in India must feel when you don't speak to them properly. Because that is what I had become, a servant to the chefs there. So it was extremely tough. Egos were hurt. A lot of crying would happen. Food was different. Kabhi hum logo ne beef nahi khaya tha India mein. Aur Austria mein log beef khate hain. So first day when we got there, and they said, okay, here's a beautiful food we're going to serve for you. And guess what they brought? On a wooden platter, they brought a beef tongue. A beef tongue on a wooden platter to an Indian who A, doesn't eat beef. B, chicken kabhi kabhi khate the. Mostly vegetarian. So, beef tongue ko khana us din raak. Aur bhook itni lagi hui thi. Toki itna lamba safar tha. Ke beef tongue kha gaya. So, my point is ke... What made you the, this is the tenacity to work hard, to remain focused, and to have a goal. 
adrishti. That is one of the most important things that a human being needs in life. Agar aapko subha utke kahin jane ka maksad hi nahi hai, then you won't do a good job. I always tell people, most important thing to wake up is to have a focus. Ke maine ye 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 karna aaj. Aur maine isko aaj accomplishment karna. That is the most important part of becoming. Hardships come. You know, you lose relationships, you lose friendships, you lose things. That happens. But the focus is the most important part in life. And there is a reason why Indian women wear bindis because we used to believe that women have that drishti, that third eye, that focus to create something down the road. They knew they could go this it was a form, it was metaphorical, but it was beautiful. So these are things that you grow up with. So you use your background and who you are and where you live and you combine it together and you create your passion on the plate. Wow. Wow. What a summarization of our long journey of career. This is, this is beautiful, absolutely, to see that. And uh, now coming to my interview questions, and I let me start, uh, go back to the childhood journey in India. And I was reading your book and I picked certain very interesting facts from there, which a lot of people will be surprised to hear today in this interview. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you were born in 1960, 1964 in Amritsar. And for the first three years of your life, you did not speak, not even Papa or Mama. And I understand that your grandmother was very concerned about it. But your mother said, don't worry, Ma. he will speak when the time is right. Mm. Now, that kind of perspective, that a belief, you know, in yourself and your child and the future of the child in a mother, that explains a lot, you know. So my question would be, how did your mother's thought process help you in subsequent journey of success for you? You know, uh, it's, it's so important in life. So... The story that you talked about is true because my grandmother used to tell me the same story. Or uh, she used to tell me that I didn't speak and she was so worried. Ki mera munda hai. He's walking fine. He's doing everything okay. He looks okay. His hands are fine, but he doesn't talk. So she thought that I had no tongue left. So she would look, pick up my tongue to see and I was fine. I just came from a quiet household. But... My mother said to my grandmother, hey, just wait, the day he starts talking, and that's exactly what happened. The day I started talking, the belief of a mother is a belief of every human being and a fundamental right. Nobody loves their children any less. Every mother loves because they have nurtured them, they have cared for them, and they know even today, if I'm going through a tough time, I always speak to my mother first, then my father. My mother always questions me and she says, Acha beta, kya hala tumara? Kya kar rahe ho? You know, all that stuff. I am far more comfortable. My father, on the other hand, is like, you know, ye nahi kiya, ye nahi kiya, isko aise kar do. Like he's very, like puts things into boxes. Yep. Whereas my mother is somebody who says, Koi baat nahi. She was the reason why I am who I am today. I am 101% saying, I'm a combination of both of them, no question about it. But that, that desire to, to never take anybody's money, to be truthful always, to have morals in life and never lie, it comes from my mother. And mother has played an extremely important role. And in spices. But there's a common respect. When she tastes my food, she says, Bahat swada. And when I taste her food, she says, Bahat swada. Because at the end, the, the love and the passion is far more important than the ingredients of the food itself. Wow. She has played an extremely important role for me and my dadi and all the other women, my buas. Everybody else, I would never say to anybody, that 
हम पले उस गांव में हुए उस उस देश से आए जहां पे हमारी बुआज भी बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट थी और आंटीज भी बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट थी सबकी जिंदगी में इंपॉर्टेंट होती है आप उसका क्या करते हो दैट इज अप टू यू टू डू एंड हाउ मच लव यू गेट एंड व्हाट यू डू विद इट या वेरी वेल सर या आई मीन गुड समराइजेशन यू नो इट्स अ बिलीफ सिस्टम ऑफ योर मदर शी हैड द बिलीफ ऑफ अ मदर but that kind of belief system if you have in yourself oh that goes a long way in your success journey very well said and 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 the story being told over and over again the idea was not ke uh, unhone kuch kaha hai the idea was ke they kept telling me the story ke i believe in you i believe in you so i was already predestined in my mind ke i cannot let my mother down i cannot let my mother down she yes. has shown me this love and this attention i'm not going to let her down so that automatically becomes your psyche that you work towards improving their lives and your own lives yeah yeah very true all right now moving forward i read in the book again you wrote your daddy your papa had a will of steel and the most important thing you learned from that from him was tenacity so if i have to ask you to elaborate tell us how the tenacity property of you know which you learned from your parents helped you in your career so tenacity hard work and focus have been the three pillars of my strength of where i am the tenacity was ke when i had opened up that 16 seat restaurant and my breakaway point was 100 dollars a day 100 dollars a day I used to sometimes sell ninety-six dollars, ninety-seven dollars in sales, just to feel good. I would go to the cash register and just ring in four dollars of naan. A saw dollar sale pe nazar aane chahiye. Uski vajay ye thi ki you start play, you have to play these mind games with your own self in order that the next morning, maine kuch karna. It's like sitting on a on a scale to know ki agar apne dus pound lose karne hai. तो आप हर सुबह उठ के दस पाउंड का देखते रहते हो कि कम तो कितना कम हो गया गोल कल की कल देखी जाएगी आज जो है वो सौ डॉलर तो अपनी जो टिप आती थी वो टिप को लेके मैं उसमें अंदर डाल देता था सौ डॉलर क्योंकि रात को जाके जब हिसाब करना होता था पापा के साथ सो ही वुड से Okay, the sale shows one hundred and five dollars. Where are the one hundred and five dollars in sales? So I have to give him that one hundred and five dollars to him. So where would that go to money come from? It came from the tips, and that is something. The point was that he was so exact in his business, but I was so making sure that my breakaway point should not be there. Until I got that first review, then I didn't have to look back. Yeah. So the the goal was to keep creating and making sure. कि माय हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड एंड डॉलर्स की जो सेल रोज की है वो कम नहीं होनी चाहिए दैट इज टेनासिटी फोकस वाज कल सुबह देखी जाएगी आज शाम को सौ डॉलर की सेल जरूर दिखानी है कैश रजिस्टर के यप यप वेरी ट्रू ऑल राइट गोइंग बैक टू योर स्कूल डेज आई अंडरस्टैंड योर टीचर्स ऑलवेज कॉल योर डिस्ट्रप्टिव चाइल्ड दिस विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर मेनी पीपल टू नो Uh, they called you as a disruptive child but in your business ventures the disruption and thinking out of the box has been the key mantra of yours when you launched widgets and it continues to be the same that way so would you suggest a similar strategy embrace disruptiveness you know to the new entrepreneurs who want to enter the new world today well so when i when, when they said disruptive i was actually very naughty okay I was very naughty. Disruptive means that I was not a bully. I was more of a shock. 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 and i loved it i would just hang out there i would go to the field and chill out a little bit now thinking outside the box is been because i felt 
that my cuisine and my culture has not been represented properly. My food has not been represented properly. If you look at our food, it's brown, browner, brownish. How do you serve Indian food with beautiful look? You serve it with love and passion. You serve it that you have come to our home and you have eaten food. You serve it with that style. So, the, the focus from school to thinking outside the box was to say, my cuisine is as complex. The naughtiness is what's written on the menu at my Shanti or at Vijay's or at Rangoli, any of the restaurants. That's the naughtiness. That's that playful nature of Kebe thinking outside. And I would say this. Everybody, doesn't matter what business you're in, whether you're studying to become an accountant or whether you're studying to become a doctor and you want to be an entrepreneur of your own, always think outside the box. You need to think outside and say, how can I be different from the person next to me? What can I do differently? Because if you're going to just follow the herd, then you're going to be just another cook or another doctor or another lawyer. So you need to think like, what can I do differently in order to get the people's attention? And that's what we did. We did, we cooked food differently. We didn't do butter chicken. We didn't do chicken tikka masala. We didn't do tandoori naan automatically. We did things slowly and we started grinding the spices. The women in the kitchen were being paid properly and fully with respect. You know, we used to have staff meals. We used to have staff meals. We used to have staff meals. Things that made sense logically are the things that we did to ourselves. So thinking outside the box, but being respectful towards your heritage and your culture and the people you work with is more important. So true. Very true. Now, now that single special dish <laughs> which you made, which changed your life. Let's talk about that. And you were in Austria. And one interesting day, you served a dish to the general manager of Banff Springs Hotel, Mr. Iwok, Iwok. And that is what changed the path of your journey, of your success journey, and you ended up being in Canada. So did you, were you really ready for it? Because sometimes what happens, the opportunities do come in your plate, and you're not ready for it. And you have no strategies for it, and you're taken aback. So were you ready for it, or, or you just got lucky? You're never ready. You're never ready. But, you know, there was my father used to joke, and I still believe in this. Ke moth ka baajay, or customer ka baajay, iska pata nahi lagta. So you always have to be prepared for it. Okay. So when I made that goulash soup for this gentleman, at that time, my thinking was that he's going to just taste my food and leave. I had no idea that he liked my goulash soup so much, like an Indian spice, that he's going to ask me to come to Canada. What changed my focus was I didn't get scared to take that jump. Yes. I didn't get worried. You know, ticket was the He sent me one way ticket, Shemineka visa. Maximum. Lekin, apna wo darwaja to khul jayega. Pata nahi hota ki kaun sa darwaja. You know, we don't know which day what door is going to open for you. So, being you cannot sometimes always prepare things. Sometimes you just have to be clear. Kud maro, dekhi jayegi. Agar doob gaye to doob gaye, aur agar you know jeet gaye to jeet gaye. Kabi kabi zindagi mein aise asool aane chahiye, aur uske liye himmat honi chahiye. My father and we, when we were kids as friends, we used to play jokingly. Or we used to say, "Kali hat aaye, kali hat jana." So you know, khabarani ki koi baat hi nahi. So wo asool jo hai, wo ban jate hain. Aapki mind ke andar kya dekhi jaye? And somebody wants to play safety net. Some people don't like it. That's totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. If I have a lot of money or not have a lot of money or a lot of this, what is more important is people recognize. How we have brought Indian food to everybody's palate and taste. Not only me, lots of other great chefs. I will also say, 
one of the examples that I learned from my growing up was Gandhi ji in a dhoti shook a nation like British Raj. I mean, can you imagine that man's tenacity and hard work and hard will? Ke ek dhoti ke indar, itne bade desh ko hila diya. I mean, hum to kush bhi nahi unke saamne. Like, mm-hmm. Talk about that tenacity. Yeah. You know, agar aap unki kitab padho, unki philosophies padho, to, you know, it reminds you kitna humility thi unke indar. Yes. Or kitni, uh, you know, kitni unme shakti thi, that, that, that desire to free India. When you look at Nelson Mandela, when you look at um, uh, Martin Luther King, that, that kind of tenacity, I have always said, even if I have got 10% of that tenacity, I have done my job in my life. Yeah. Because with those are the people. Aaj, the person who built Taj Mahal, not many people remember. But people remember Gandhi ji, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King, because they brought positive changes to... So even if you are worried or scared, don't be worried. It's okay. As long as you have yourself, your truth, your feeling, your honesty, nobody can shake you. Wow. What a message. Very nice. <laughs> okay. Coming back to the work culture of Vijas. <laughs> you know, Amarjeet Gill was the first person employed by you 25 years back. And even today, she is with you as general manager of all your kitchens. You employ people, cooks from India. Some of them don't even know English. Yeah. And then, you know what? They become your family. Interesting, you know? And then somebody would say that, oh, how can I have employees as family? How do I manage them? So the question will come to a current today's entrepreneur would be, how do you manage performance when you treat employees as a family? How do you do that? Would you like to say a couple of words on that? <laughs> so I think the biggest compliment should be given to Miru, who is my partner in business, um, my wife, ex-wife, not, not my present wife. Um, because when we met, she came from a beautiful background of third world. And so when Miru and I met, uh, she got attached to Amarjeet. Amarjeet and her became like sisters and became really good friends. Amarjeet ko English ni aati thi aur Miru ko Hindi bahut kam aati thi. So their communication used to be like two passing ships. I used to see them sometimes talking and it was like two passing ships. Ek kuch kera, ek kuch kera. And I was the one in the middle. I would see both of these guys talking and I was like, you're talking two different things. But the love and the intention for both of them was very genuine. So that is what has blossomed. And Amarjeet and the rest of the ladies in the kitchen, Sarabjeet, Sukhveer, all the ladies, they became their part of the family. And Miru nurtured that part of the relationship. Miru was the one who was the catalyst to create beautiful food and to also take it to a different level of uniqueness because she knew both the words really, really well. So when you treat people with respect and love, then they give it back to you. You treat them like a family, but that doesn't mean that you treat every family member the same way as well. You treat them with respect, whether they are family or anybody else, because Gandhiji said, we are all equal. And we are all equal at the end of the day. And that is how we have always believed in. There's no hierarchy between us. There's no like, I'm the sous chef and you're the head chef and you're this and you're that. There's no hierarchy between us. If we eat food, we eat food. None of that stuff. We, we cook together, we eat together. And when you break bread with the people that you're with, then you build tolerances towards each other. Yes. Then you understand each other's nuances. When you sit down and you say, okay, why are you doing this or why are you doing that? It becomes a part of your relationship and your village. 
and that village blossoms with passion and love. And that's what shows on the plate. And when, when that shows on the plate, people come back to you because they can taste it. Yeah, absolutely. The love and passion. The combined together, that's the best recipe. <laughs> it is and, really. Is. Yes. And that I would like to touch on a some, same, same subject, which is called egalitarian approach. So you have been following an egalitarian approach. All are equal with respect to your employees as well as the guests. The guests come and they got a queue up in the, in the line. Whatever level, whatever profession, whatever background they may have, but they still queue up to enter and enjoy bridges, right? So the question will come, you know, why did you do things so differently? A lot of people have long waiting times for the, you know, long reservation timings, you know, and even the kitchens are managed by the chefs in a very tough manner internationally. You have possibly gone through that journey, early yeah. phases, you know, how the chefs treat their people in the kitchen. So, but you did things very differently. So, would you like to say a couple of words? Because, because I was treated with disrespect in my own kitchens by where I was working, is I said, I will turn everything that bothers me about my industry around. So, I said, I will not have sous chefs and chefs. I will eat and every, there will be no staff meals. We will all eat together, whatever they want to eat, whether it's the front of the house, or the back of the house, they will allow to eat it. Uh, biggest thing I did was, and I wanted no reservations is because in our industry, we are notorious to say, oh, so-and-so is so-and-so and so is so-and-so and so. I want everybody to be equal. So it doesn't matter whether you're an actor or you're a teacher, because to me, a teacher that teaches my kids to be great human beings or a nurse that saves lives is as important as an actor whose name is out there. Why is one actor more, than, uh, more important than anybody else? Though? Who says they're more important? Nobody says that they're more important. It's luck of the draw that somebody has money and somebody doesn't. But the hard work and the love behind it is exactly the same. So I wanted to remove all these extra padded layers that our industry comes with. And I think it's important for us to realize that giving reserva no reservation or being an equal means that you're treating people with respect and love. And it was never there that they waited outside. They came in, they had a glass of chai, we brought some food out for them. It was relaxing. It's like coming to a lounge and just chilling out. And I think that was what was important for me, acknowledging the people that are waiting and not letting anybody feel disrespected. He becomes a, or she becomes a VIP. Why? At the end of the day, uh, everybody is doing their job and their part in their lives and they do a great job of it. You know, so when I go somewhere and somebody says, I'll give you this preferential treatment, I say, no, I don't want it. I want to be like everybody else. I do not want to be treated differently because at the end of the day, the color of my blood is exactly the color of the blood of, of the person next to me. So what go. makes anybody a, a bigger uh, being? And it, it's, it's wrong for us to, to think that I'm important. No one is important. Everyone is important. You know, I just had this beautiful, um, I just watched this beautiful documentary the other day. Um, it was Amitabh Bachchan and Kapil Dev talking about this movie that has just come out. And I saw the video and I saw this, uh, their program and you look at them. They are both keep talking about their work and the performances and the worship and the love of what they do, not how big they've become and what they have become. And I think that's what is most fundamentally important is that I learned so much from that interview with him, listening to him, because he was more about um, you know, talking about his art and music and everything else. That is extremely important. So I you know, also become a learner. I don't think that I know it all. You know, when I go to India and I go to somebody's <coughs> house in India and that woman makes a different cup of a, a chai differently, I'm like, oh, God, because you don't know everything. And our Hindustan, there are many people in style of cuisine. True. So it's important to, to uh, do things differently, but paying respect to where you came from. 
yeah respect for the individual the person yeah it's not the position it's all about the respecting the person exactly yeah. and making sure that they feel respected that yes. this is the love that you're genuine and you're honest right 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 all right now everybody in life from the journey of life is bestowed with certain strengths and certain weaknesses or areas of growth and learning process so if you look back what was your strengths what were you what were your strengths which you were you felt you were bestowed with and what are the areas you had to grow and improve to be where you are today so that's a great question and it's a very personal question and i'll answer it very with person i think my strengths were i love people i enjoy people i love talking to people i am somebody who who could be in a place in a in a get together and i will have people laugh and talk to me and and you know bring people in so i'm able to do that my biggest negative is okay i I have a tendency to 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 do five, six, eight things at the same time. The goal for me is to just make sure that Indian food is represented properly. But in that goal, I take six different ways, and I get distracted sometimes. And one of my distractions was loss of my marriage. And I am open enough to say it. I admit it. if you are going to fail fail loudly if you are going to fail then fail loudly be a man or a woman and say be strong and say i made a mistake i am sorry for it and i believe that i made a biggest mistake i left a totally happy marriage because i believe that i was my path to a journey was different than hers and for that i had to pay the price and it hurts it really hurts so my my weakness is that i am i i have a tendency to do six things at the same time seven i'll, I'll keep taking things on on my plate and for that i have to learn over the years to say okay i'm not going to take this project on i'm not going to say yes to this i'm not going to accept this on and i'm going to remain especially now that i'm 53 i feel that i need to rein in and tie in all the loose ends that i have so that i can bring it back into what the actual focus was of the 16 seat restaurant in 1994 ki hindustani khana khaya aapne isse zyada swad khana nahi nahi mila ye hona chahiye mm hmm okay now if you recall if you have to recall the most i'm sure you had many memories of this success journey but if you have to identify one most memorable day of your success journey what would that be I have just recently come from New Delhi, cooking uh, for our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and I was invited to cook. I think my most important feeling was that I was inviting the Prime Minister of a country that I live in to the country of my birth, and to showcase that country's. beautiful food and flavors and to to be able to share with him to say when you go to harmandar sahab when you go anywhere else please wear indian clothes to me was the biggest moment of personal achievement because i really do believe that i come from the largest democracy in the world called india but i live in the best democracy in the world called canada and so for me to be able to cook for a prime minister in the country of my birth and showcase has been one of my biggest highlights of my career 
um, and for him to acknowledge and to be able to talk to the chefs of, of India about Canadian produce, Canadian farmers, Canadian blueberry farmers of a Punjabi descent in, in Vancouver, our, um, our uh, you know, seafood, what we have, the, the, the quality of life we have, the tourism that we have, to be able to talk about that to Indians in India um, has been highlighted. I, I almost feel like I, will, I went there as an, as an unappointed ambassador of <laughs> the country. So that was coming to my mind. <laughs> I felt like I was going to an unappointed ambassador of the country. And uh, the love and the respect that I got from them was, was just beautiful. Wow, beautiful. I'm sure you will remember it for a long time. <laughs> I I yes. Love. Now, if you were to name two people who impacted your life the most and helped you progress in your career, who would they be? They have to be alive or they have, can, can they be gone? They can be. Yeah, anyone. Like, they impacted your life in totality. So I, I definitely would want to meet Gandhiji. Okay. The reason why I would want to meet Gandhiji is because I would love to see and hear from him. What was his thought process of when he was going through that, when he was thrown out of that train in South Africa to come back and to fight and to, to deal with all these issues and how he managed to change a course of a nation. I think definitely I would love to meet him for that. And I would love to meet Roshan Lalvej again. My dada, who used to say to me in Punjabi, that Vikram, when you are big, you have to be very popular. Kari. I would love to meet him and I love to see him. And I think Somewhere up there, he's looking down and saying, he's saying, Can I with it. Yeah. So, I really am, uh, I, I would love to, you know, and, and tell him all the naughty things I used to do. Uh, like I would go to his wallet when he was sleeping and I would pull out money from his wallet and go and buy candies and things like that, you know. I would love to tell him, yeah, it was me who used to steal all your money and go and, you know, buy candies. Wow. That's, uh, and, and, you know, you have created bridges in true, as a true tribute to your grandfather. No questions about it. It is. I mean, the name of the bridges has nothing to do with Vikram Vidges. It has to do with the family of bridges and the, the, the idea of saying, you come to Vikram Vidges' house, let's enjoy, relax, and have delicious food. Right. Now, if you have to identify or say something or share something which people don't know about you, <laughs> what would that be? Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that people realize, people think that because you're chefs and you cook delicious foods, that you go home and you eat or you eat lavish foods. People don't realize it, that I come from a country where I don't like to waste food because bukhar hai na bahut mushkil hota it's very difficult to remain hungry so whenever the when the food comes out from the tables of the restaurant not on the plates but if there is a bowl of curry left or rasa left i take it home and i eat that because i cannot see it go wasted so people say to me, you know, you must be eating fancy lamb popsicles or fancy dishes on the menu. I don't. I actually eat what's left over from the plate that comes in. Not from the plate, not the customer's plate, but the bowl that's sitting there and somebody doesn't want to take it home. It really bothers me that hum khana is a waste kar rahe. Yaan to ghar le jaiye, but khana an ko jaya nahi karna chahiye. An ko waste nahi karna chahiye. So it really bothers me that, that I do it. And so people will think that I eat lavish foods. I actually don't. I eat leftover. And it comes from, if you look at it, Indian mothers do the same thing sometimes. If you look at it, everybody's yep. eating all those fancy meals and everything else. And the mother would just go to the back of the 
वही रोटी के साथ खा लेते हैं दीज आर थिंग्स दैट यू लर्न माई ग्रैंड मदर यूज टू डू दैट कि प्रॉपर बैठ के रोटी नहीं खानी है यू नो कि जो पतीले में बचा है उसको उसी के साथ रब किया और उसी को करके खा लिया और उसी से पेट भर दिया That is what I do, and people don't know this much. People, you know, may think that I eat fancy. I actually don't. I eat very simple leftover food from the plates, uh, from the uh, from the bowls. Oh my God! I'm sure you have surprised many people through <laughs> <laughs> so your, you know, uh, and you know the frankness with which you share things. That's amazing. Because dar nahi na hai. Yeah. Dar nahi hai. Kya hoga? Kuch kuch nahi hoga. Nobody is going to say anything. I really believe that food should not be wasted. True. जो पानी आपकी टेबलों से वापस आता है उसको हम बचा के जो हमारे प्लांट है हम उनको पानी देते उसके साथ वेरी श्योर सस्टेनेबिलिटी यू नो हम कितने सालों से कह रहे हैं कि वी मस्ट बी केयरफुल वी मस्ट बी केयरफुल वी मस्ट बी केयरफुल वी मस्ट बी केयरफुल अदरवाइज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स आई टोल्ड जस्ट इन आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर लुक एट दिस कंट्री दैट यूर इन This country, 500 years, 5,000 years ago, was as rich as your country today. We had the minerals, we had the water, we had everything. But because of some wrong mistakes, we don't have it now. So treat this planet with respect and love, and don't take it for granted. Great message. I really appreciate that. Now, saying thank you. Big people, successful people, always have a sense towards gratitude. they always are thankful to what they have so if you were to say thanks to three people i am trying to put a number not necessarily you have the choice of adding more but if you would like to thank a couple of people in your life who really impacted your life in a big way who would they be well first of all i would love and i really thank miru who has been an instrumental part in being of who i am and saying sorry to her to say i am sorry i made a mistake so i am very very thankful to her for that i would love to be thankful to my kids because in spite of seeing how crazy i was and i was how silly i was they still said to me papa i love you so i think if i could put those two together as one of them and then miru and i really 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 cannot thank enough to all the staff that works together with me in that goal and without them i would be nothing they are like my backbone they are my reed ki haddi you know i could have everything i want but if i don't have that spinal cord they are my spinal cord they are the ones who are feeling and moving and twitching and tasting and tuck you know doing things for me from the back they are my they are my support without their support i would be kim i would be not here so without them all of them uh, are are one of the most fundamental things for me i mean these are my most gratitude of course you pay gratitude towards the god and the love and everything that you have received from there but i have a very i i will knock on wood and say i am just totally humbled and honored that i have been given this opportunity and i'm truly blessed as a human being now as a message to the next generation if you have to identify three success mantras of your life which you would like to recommend to the future generation upcoming generation who are going to embrace the life the real world what would they be Well, first of all, would be education. Study what you are studying to do. So, study in the field that you really love doing. <clears throat> Most important part, because education is power, and power only comes to people that have an educated opinion. So, education, read, work. Second is experience. Success is not a pill that you take at night time. and then you wake up in the morning and you're successful it doesn't success is that you had a uh, brown hair and now you have white hair that success you know success is that you can look back and say i did the best i could 
I worked hard at it. And if I failed, then so be it. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up and go out and do it. That is success. That is what I would say. Whether you're 21 or 51, never stop living your life. Because the day you stop living your life is the day where you should be underground. Because you're only going to be here for those times that Nobody has stayed a day longer or a day younger, less. So you might as well enjoy every moment of it. And don't, don't crib. Don't cry. Do what you want to do out of passion. So if you feel like going, like I've actually just decided in two or three uh, um, months ago that once all of this is done at the age of 60, I have seven more years to go. I already have that focus. I am going to go to a small little island and open up another 16-seat restaurant where I will do all the cooking. Wow. <laughs> I'm all excited. I'm like, Dekhi jayegi. And my kids were laughing so hard. They were like, really, Papa? And I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to go back to ground zero where I started and cook food and just cook food for the, the, the fun sake. And in fact, that is true passion. <laughs> of what you do. Yeah. It comes from inside, you know. It comes from inside. Ideas come from there. I don't have the idea that I have a chas restaurant or this or this. This is not me. I have to say that someone will tell me that Vikram has made changes to the way Indian food is perceived. And I think I'm proud of every Indian chef in this community. I don't want to take it away from myself. I actually think there are great, great, great Indian chefs in this country and in England and everywhere else that have put and worked extremely hard. On their behalf, I am saying thank you to the people that come to our restaurants and support us. All right. Now, if you were to relive your life, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do differently if you were to live, relive your life? See, first of all, it will never happen. So it's a, it's a fantasy. <laughs> But if I was to relive my life, I would do nothing differently, not even a minute differently, because I've had a good life. What more can I ask for? Okay. What more can you ask? So living in a fantasy world and, and hoping that wo hota, ye hota, ye hota, you know, the only thing I would want to do is maybe I would have wanted to become a Bollywood actor. Oh, okay. They would have to do some stage acting if possible. <laughs> possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, the closing question which I always have for the people, you know, I normally interview as my success icons. What's your dream? You know, dreams change as time changes. Sure. <laughs> The only dream that I want people to do or have is every Canadian household in this country should eat Indian food once a week. They should eat Chinese food once a week. They should eat Vietnamese food once a week. They should eat steak once a week. They should change things because I've always believed that uh, cuisines are like rivers. They must flow and change. So even if you're an Indian, you should eat food from different parts of the world. Don't eat always Indian food. Eat food from different parts of the world. Eat food from China. Eat food from Vietnam. Eat food from Canada. Eat food from different parts of the world. Because when you eat food from different places of the world, you build understanding and tolerances. And... That is the only dream that I have, that I want every human being to understand and enjoy great cuisines and great foods of this world. Wow, that was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now, I'm at the close of the interview, but thank you very much, Mr. Vikram, for your time. I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, you took out, I know you're very, very busy, but you took out time for this. And I'm sure, you know, your interview 
or your success journey is going to inspire many people for times. And that's my whole mission here. When I brought you in, my vision is that yes, your journey, your journey, your story is going to motivate many, many people from time to come. Thank you very much once again. Appreciate that. Namaskar. And if I have managed to motivate even a young chef to feel that if a lion cook can become a dragon one day, so can I become somebody one day. That is the focus and the drishti that I've given to somebody else. And I wish everybody who watches this and you um, a great humble namaste and thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm truly honored, honored and humbled. Thank you very much. It's an honor, in, indeed an honor for me. Thank you very much to have you on my uh, feature and I'm sure you will inspire many, 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 many souls and lives in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jee Namaskar. Thank you very much, Namaskar.